Okay, let's talk a little bit more about these G proteins and the different classes that I mentioned in the previous slide. I know there's a lot of information on this slide, but we'll focus on the most important concepts. As you're studying for the boards, you can return to this slide to review the physiological effects or outcomes of many of these pathways. As you'll see, many of the drugs that you learn about affect these pathways and therefore can be used to manipulate physiological responses. I know that some of the details here may seem inane, but it's important to know the pathways, which you see at the bottom here, because they are very testable. Again, we'll go through each of these in turn. By the time you're done studying, you should be able to write out all of these receptors in this order and be able to recall the class of G protein that they stimulate. Once you memorize this list from top to bottom, you can use this mnemonic to remember which G protein class goes with which receptor. The mnemonic is kiss and kick till you're sick of sex. Okay, so let's review these points in a bit more detail. First, let's talk about the GQ class. Again, remember that there are three types of G proteins. There are the GQ G proteins, the GI G proteins, and the GS G proteins. Receptors which are associated with the GQ protein will cause activation of this G protein, which will then go on to activate phospholipase C. Phospholipase C cleaves a lipid which is found in the cell membrane to produce two molecules, IP3, or inositol triphosphate, and DAG, diacylglycerol. IP3 has three phosphate groups and is thus highly soluble in the cytosol, which is mostly water. This molecule actually floats away and binds to receptors found on the endoplasmic reticulum, which result in the release of calcium into the cytosol. While IP3 floats away, diacylglycerol is simply that part of PIP2 which is still bound to the membrane after IP3 has been released. The calcium that's released into the cytosol can then bind to protein kinase C, and in cooperation with diacylglycerol, the enzyme known as protein kinase C becomes activated and triggers a signaling pathway, which results in a variety of effects. You can see that the GQ protein is used by the alpha-1 receptor, the M1 receptor, the M3 receptor, the H1 receptor, and the V1 receptor, which we've listed here. You can remember this set of receptors with the mnemonic have one m and m So in summary, when the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor, the M1 or M3 muscarinic receptor, the H1 histamine receptor and the V1 vasopressin receptor bind to the respective ligands, there is a conformational change in the receptors which then activates the GQ protein. And this GQ protein can then activate the pathway that we've just discussed. Of course, you can see that each of these receptors are used by a variety of tissues and they all result in a different physiological response. Again, this would be a good slide to come back to once you've learned about the individual drugs which target these receptors. But for now, let's move on to the next class of G proteins, the GS class. The GS protein is used by the beta-1, beta-2, D1, H2, and V2 receptors, which we've listed here. When these receptors bind their respective ligands, there is a conformational change in the receptor that activates the GS protein. The GS protein goes on to activate an enzyme which is known as adenylyl cyclase. When activated, adenylyl cyclase converts ATP into cyclic AMP. And cyclic AMP then activates protein kinase A, which then triggers a signaling pathway, which results in its own set of effects. Notice that we don't have a good mnemonic for this set of receptors. But if you remember the mnemonic for the GQ-associated receptors and the mnemonic for the GI-associated receptors, which we'll discuss in just a moment, then you can remember that the GS protein is associated with the remaining receptors. Okay, so let's talk about the final class, the GI class. The GI class mediates the effects of the alpha-2, M2, and D2 receptors, which you can remember with the mnemonic MAD2s. When these receptors bind to their respective ligands, the GI protein is activated, 
but instead of activating adenylyl cyclase, it inhibits adenylyl cyclase, which then results in a reduction of cyclic AMP and a reduction in the activity of protein kinase A. So you can see how the GI protein class and the GS protein class have opposing effects on the adenylyl cyclase enzyme.